Good morning. We have a unique worship experience this morning that I want to tell you about before we experience it together. Um, we are celebrating this Sunday our uh, National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Um, we're united with, with all of Canada this weekend on this, um, on this theme. And uh, we're joined uh, this morning by several folks from uh, throughout um, our diocese and indeed throughout uh, the National Church. Uh, we'll be greeted in a moment by our bishop. Uh, we have other guests uh, worshiping with us. Uh, we're going to be learning some things about uh, Inuit history and other. Uh, there's going to be a smudging uh, ceremony. It's going to be really uh, wonderful. Uh, there's a reflection that's not from me. Um, so I would. So the service is going to be the same length as our normal service, um, but it, and it's going to include hymns. It's going to include readings and the prayers of the people, uh, the gospel. All of the sort of the core elements of our worship service are going to be there, and it's going to be about the same length of time. Um, but there are a lot of guests that will be joining us this morning, so I just wanted to to prepare you for that uh, before we uh, before you begin to worship. In this way, so you won't be sort of just surprised the whole time. <laughs> so, uh, so with that, I uh, I invite you to to worship and, and and pray with me. And for the rest of the the service, I'll be over over at at St. Matthew's. So, uh, I'll see you over there. It is sunrise, and I greet you from the shores of Kichizibi, just upstream from the sacred place known as Akikojiwan, where the waters move with great power and force over the ancient rocks, a place of peace and encounter for Indigenous peoples since time immemorial. It's my privilege to stand here on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe, 
and to greet you in the name of God who creates us, restores us, and sanctifies us and all life. It is sunrise, and many years ago, shortly after the release of the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, I attended a sunrise ceremony led by Albert Dumont. We gathered in a circle to greet the dawn of a new day, a time of hope and promise and healing. The circle was very much a place of safety where we could share deeply together regardless of where we had come from and the trust that was generated by gathering at sunrise in a circle is something I will never forget. And so as we mark National Indigenous Day this year, this time of the summer solstice, I pray that we will be deeply conscious that we dwell in a circle at all times, made one by our Creator, made in the image of our Creator, and made to love as our Creator loves us. And so may the healing power of our Creator who makes each new day be with each of you as you mark this particular day. And may you be drawn more deeply into the circle of love and healing and peace, which is God's purpose for all human beings. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi, my name is Aiga Adakutsa, originally from Arctic Bay, Baton Island. I'm going to like the Kholak and, and talk about the importance 
the the how important it was for Inui long ago. And that was the only source for light, heat, and cooking in the cold tundra area. When it's 24 hours dark, this light of Kodluk seems very bright. And my, I remember my mother sewing in winter time near the Kodluk, trying to have light. And she, you, they used the Kodluk for cooking and they have net above it and little hook to 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 boil the the water and they have oil from the seal blubber narwhal walrus and sometimes fish blubber and for traveling in on the land for caribou hunting, they used the caribou fat, but they had to chew it first to soften it and making sure if there's no, not much uh, mucus in it because it's wet. So for traveling, they used small kudluk and for ca like camping and to be in the same area for long they have bigger kudluk so and and it was that's the only inuit survived just because they have kudluk so i still have a mother and she's one, she's turning 101 in June, and she still have kudluk for light, for heat, and for cooking. So she makes bannock from the kudluk she has. So, yeah, it's very important to have kudluk. And the shape of the kudluk is important too. Um, the shape of it that this has to be like even not straight so that so that the flames won't go towards this or that so it so it has to be straight up to to have the oil last longer if the flames go either this way or that way they'll use more oil so there are lots of importance of the kudluk. Like if, especially when you use them all the time, like you have to be careful. Uh, sometimes uh, to shape it well for the for the woman to be comfortable. And this this is made out of this is a. Uh, control light flames and this is made out of a uh, soapstone my mother made this for me for my ordination so it's to control the flame so so that the flame won't go too high or the the smoke will go on the roof and my mother never liked that so we don't control them all the time that this could be light for overnight too if the flames are like this even and and when you want the the place to to be warmer the flames have you can put the flames higher like this and and if it's too warm you make it lower you make that the flames lower so at night, they only use a little bit. During the day, they, they make it bigger. 
and for cooking they make it even higher the flames higher so you control it depending what you want to do so that's how important it is to have kudlo and thank you for listening have a good day hi i will pray the collect of the day in to the first ting of the day you you did go ting katang otigi kilang mit no na miglo at kam mata tung nga ka kluta ang otigi si mayam ni naglini ko sangin ng mit tuni si bigid tuti tuni si tuti ano na ajon ay tukon o kahon na na misuri yuko naglini na mit piyumin piso katigi ko na kluta na magtukon iluto ko kita ni kulo ko ba si kluta ang katigi ang katigi na mit ino kluta Aula katigi ko na kuluta e kayo katigi ni ko. Sangin ang may tunisibig ila ati ko. Ama, tuka ko na kuluta e kayo katigi ni ko. Pero padayangin na kuluta. Ilo ito ko titaw si Maruta. Christ to isa ka man ang kagati ko. Ino sa kaluti ko lo. Amen. Creator, God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You are rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people journeying together in partnership may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into full stature of Christ, who is our light in our life. We raise the sacred smoke this morning to cleanse our minds and our thoughts that we may think in a good way. We cleanse our eyes that we may see in a good way. We cleanse our ears that we may hear in a good way. We cleanse our mouth that we may speak in a good way. We cleanse our hearts, cleanse our feelings, that we may be present in a good way. We cleanse our hands, that they may be used in a good way. We cleanse our feet, that we may walk in a good way. And that today, we greet all of our relations in a good way. Miigwech. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. 
One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and the voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and the message to the ends of the earth. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I now invite you to sing uh, with me when long before time and the worlds were begun.
was broken when God sang the song, and light pierced the darkness, and rhythm began, and with its first birth cries, creation was born, and creaturely voices sang praise to of the creatures were one with the Lord's, their harmony sweet and befitting the word. The singer was pleased as the earth sang the song, the choir of the creatures re The song disappeared, its harmonies broken and almost unheard. The singer comes to us to sing it again. Our God is with us in the world now as then. The light has returned as it came once before. The song of the Lord is our own song once more. So let us all sing with one heart and one voice the song of the singer in whom we rejoice. To you, God, the singer, of voices we raise. To you, song incarnate, we give all the praise. To you, Holy Spirit, our life and our breath, be glory forever through life and The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning at the 35th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we celebrate the National Indigenous Day of Prayer, we are learning about and fully appreciating the deep, sustained, and sacred connections to the land that are at the heart of the lives of all Indigenous peoples. The story of the St. Peter's Surrender is the story of my grandmother's family and people about how much they lost, and yet how their deep connection could not really be severed. My grandmother, Mary Ann Hall, was born at the St. Peter's Reserve in Manitoba in 1880. St. Peter's was home to Soto and Cree people on the banks of Cook's Creek near the Red River. At the same time, the nearby town of Selkirk was expanding 
and there began to be pressure on the St. Peter's community to sell off their land. In September 1907, the St. Peter's Reserve was surrendered back to the Manitoba government. St. Peter's residents did technically vote on the surrender, but the vote was intentionally confusing with almost no notice, and the proceedings were exclusively in English, despite many residents not speaking that language. By 1910, it was reported in the local paper that the Indians of St. Peter's Reserve believed they were the victims of the white man's cunning and cupidity in the recent surrender of their lands. It was debated in the House of Commons, with the local MP saying that the land should not have passed into the hands of speculators and friends of government, and calling the surrender a barefaced swindle. The local Methodist minister was considered to be one of the swindlers. Many of the St. Peter's community went on to establish a new reserve, the Pegwas First Nation on the Fisher River. Some, like my grandmother, lost most of their connections to St. Peter's. In 1911, the Manitoba government appointed a royal commission to look into the St. Peter's surrender. It determined that the surrender was not valid, illegal. But nothing was done to rectify that situation or provide redress, and the community remained dispersed, alienated, and lost to one another. But the Pegwas First Nation continued to press for justice. In 1998, Canada confirmed it agreed that the 1907 surrender of the St. Peter's Reserve was void and legally invalid. In 2009, over 100 years after the surrender, the Pegwas First Nation surrender claim received $126 million. Negan Sinclair, the son of Murray Sinclair, has spoken about the surrender as his ancestors were also from St. Peter's. He says that the Indians at St. Peter's were prospering and might have been seen as a threat. He says the removal of the Indians was a kind of ethnic cleansing and asks us to acknowledge that this is the history that made the town of Selkirk what it is today. A book about the St. Peter's surrender was written some time ago. It's called, Shall We Gather at the River? It tells how the people at the time of the surrender said that they had left their faces at the river. When I think of the hymn, Shall We Gather at the River? I see it as a kind of honor song for my grandmother and all my relations who felt that they had left their faces at that river but whose resilience, perseverance, and faith have meant they ultimately prevailed. Let us now confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer prayers for all creation, saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world. Let us pray, Lord, have mercy. In our worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer, let us pray for the Church of North India, for our national indigenous bishop, the Most Reverend Mark MacDonald, and in our Diocese of Ottawa, for St. John's Richmond, and the parish of Mabley Lanark. Let us pray, Lord, have mercy. 
For all peoples on earth and their leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are sick, wandering, afflicted, suffering famine, or oppressed, for all suffering oppression outside the glare of the daily news cycle, remembering in particular this week the peoples of Francophone West Africa suffering both military coups and jihadist attacks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in our parish who are in need and those who are ill, Becky, Lelia, Grace, Emma, Malachi, Loivan, Sheila, Herta, Mary Bridget, Virginia, Doug, Anne, Isabel, Chip, and Sally. And for those known to us alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have been infected by the pandemic, whose loved ones have been infected, and for all struggling with isolation and missing church and community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Also, for each and every one of us, struggling with isolation, balancing family and work, let us pray also for all faces families as they struggle to adapt to new life in Canada during these strange times. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters in Moose Factory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us remember the souls of the children lost from the Kamloops Residential School and pray for peace and healing for the Kamloops Desequipem First Nation in Kamloops and all whose lives have been affected by the residential school system. Let us pray that we may never lack courage in facing the past as we work for the future and may we keep what is true in front of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us offer prayers of celebration with Michael Jarvis for his 91st birthday on June the 7th. May he continue to live in God's grace. Let us also give prayers of thanksgiving with Sheila and Gordon McCaffrey on the occasion of their 60th wedding anniversary on June 17th. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us offer prayers for those who have died from this life with the gifts of your all-encompassing love and life eternal. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us offer prayers of thanksgiving for the life of Jacqueline Marguerite Ruth McMahon, who died to new life on June the 11th, 2021, and for Jackie's sisters, Judy Maxwell and Julia Grace, her partner Marion, and all her family and friends who mourn her loss. For the life of Chris Stanfield, who died on June the 3rd, and for his sons, Liam, McGregor, and Brennan, and family who mourn his loss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lives of the Afzal family, Salman, Madiha, Yumna, and grandmother Talat Afzal, who died on June the 6th, and for all who suffer from racism and violence. 
Let us offer special prayers also for nine-year-old Fias, who remains in hospital. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of our salvation, hear the prayers we offer this day for all who are tossed in the storms of life and open wide our hearts to accept your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hi, I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Kamutani, Misami Beta Pisin, Natua Sin. Amen. May God, who never grows faint or weary, give you strength and courage to rise up as an eagle. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Tiyonaki ko sunog drang ano sa kutin ng ano lupa ko bagay at ano sa magtilitit sa kutilutilo at ano okay na mano kamat sa kutin sa magtilutilo at ano ako na yung letir ulap sa kutin manilo tuni si Vicky Lunti mamay sa kamit tumalo yun. With Elvis Hansu, Nancy Hansintai, with the with the ako chantu through the dino. Because we got out to get the quadricoli, the project, the right angle too. Amen. Got the bench gets go with you, Kwa. Minako Kananamakwa, Usakionink, Mino Pit again, Mwenink. Utsunakas onink, Utama, Okusama, Minagaganaz Dachak. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to sing our recessional hymn, Let All Things Now Living. and fountains, the 
the deeps of the ocean in praises combine. We too should be voicing a love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us praise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to God in the highest. Hosanna. This service has ended, but your service has just begun. Go into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.